Hello my soccer universe. Let's talk Champions League. Unlike last week where I could actually do and punch them together, I didn't find the time to do this uh, this week. And yeah, I'm not even sure when this will post because I'm going to the last game against AZ Alkmaar uh, in the evening. So I have no idea when everything will get ready, but I hope that by Friday this all posts uh, that also means that the Europa League lowdown will also come probably Saturday, not sooner, I would expect. Um, we had, I think this round was not as exciting, I have to say, this week. The last four games, I think there was a whole lot more to talk about. Um, I realized I have six of the eight teams in there, and I'm actually looking for the seventh, which is Bayern. So I put them all up here, but I think the only team that really did something great is Manchester City. Uh, of the teams that I have, and I think back there, Barcelona maybe got something. We'll talk about that um, in a bit all but put them back up there. Maybe let's start with Barcelona, because uh, that was a weird display. Again, uh, this was possession for possession's sake, but I think this time it was also due to Napoli actually being defensively extremely solid. This is not the Napoli that everyone loved when they were playing for with Sari, but that was clear even under An uh, Angelotti. Napoli always had has now this solid backline and they found themselves and they actually could keep Barcelona at bay for most of the game, I had the feeling, uh, and hit them on the counter. And that's exactly what they did in the 30th min minute when Zielinski comes, uh, play, uh, runs down, plays it over to Mertens, who with a wonderful shot, probably the best goal, uh, at least this week in the Champions League, uh, puts it in a corner and it is 1-0 for uh, Napoli and honestly wholly deserved because there were not many chances from Barcelona. Um, as I said, I think it's down to tactics but it could also well be that, um, you know, the speed it still needs to work and you probably didn't have the formation that you need for that. Uh, but you gotta give it to Barcelona that with probably their one really forward going attack, at least it seemed to me that way. Uh, Nelson Semedo uh, pay, plays it over to Griezmann and I really thought that Semedo is offside. He was not. That was the one time that the Napoli defense looked a little bit out of sorts. Plays it over to Griezmann who can pull it in. Only shot of Griezmann on goal as far as I can remember. Uh, I think there was only another shot on goal for uh, uh, for Barcelona, Napoli after that had actually two or three chances to win the tie, but they couldn't. And then Vidal goes berserk and gets uh, two yellow cards in a short period of time, very short period of time, and is sent off and is missing. Uh, speaking of, of Vidal, I really enjoyed when they showed the Barcelona lineup uh, ahead of that game that Vidal was put um, on the front there in the front attacking line, uh, which I think everyone could agree. This is not how they're going to play. I know that everyone is thinking Barcelona 4-3-3, four, 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 three, three, but I think it was more like a 4-4-2 four, four, or something like that. Uh, really weird game. Um, anything but was Chelsea Bayern, where Chelsea put in an average performance and Bayern probably one of the best performances of the season. Everyone is going crazy about Bayern uh, based on this performance. I mean, it took them a while. Uh, they already had the better of the first half, where I actually always had kind of the hope that maybe Chelsea get them get themselves together, hit them on the on on the counter, and Bayern is gonna. Uh, flame out, no, nothing like that. Uh, Lewandowski was outstanding. Uh, the way he assisted the two goals by Gnabry in the 51st and in the 54th, especially the second one, where in both cases he can shoot, but he sees Gnabry is in a better position and can put it into the net. That is a world-class striker that is also not only going for goals, but also aware of his surroundings. Um, and yeah, I hear it more often and I start to agree that Lewandowski at the moment is probably the best striker in the world. So within three minutes, Bayern decided that tie. And it should have been probably more. I mean, I think Müller even hit the woodwork in the first half, was it? I think so. Um, 
where they could have already taken the lead and they had chances to maybe make it even sure there was not much coming from Chelsea and Lewandowski crowns his evening with a nice assist by Davis who was a thorn in Chelsea's side I mean that pace they couldn't control and they make it 3-0 away win biggest away win uh, away loss of, no let me retract biggest home loss for Chelsea in European competitions that's must sting a lot. Uh, again, I'm not going all that crazy about Bayern being now the top favorites for the Champions League. Uh, yes, they had a very good showing, but yes, it's only February. Lewandowski is out. He has on the shin, on the lower shin towards the ankle, he has a fracture that needs to be uh, taken care of. So he's out for at least a month. So he will miss the return leg, which might not, not be a big thing. But uh, what will this mean with respect to uh, going forward? Will he be in full fitness again? That is, <laughs> that is maybe a slight concern. But I'm also not so sure how strong was the opposition really. I mean, if they've been 3-0 away, let's say, at a PSG or um, Manchester City, and uh, without doubt they they probably are capable of doing that, then I would say uh, much, then I would feel much more, yeah, by another top favorites. I don't quite see it. This defense is a little bit shaky, in my opinion. So uh, we have to see how things that are, are developing never crown um, Champions League winner in February. That's in May. It is now just get to the next round. That's all that counts. You can build maybe up momentum come semi-finals or something like that and then you have usually a long wait until the final comes. It's not that that easy um, um, in the Champions League of predicting things. I uh, also should mention that Alonso got a VAR red card because he punched Lewandowski from behind. Uh, as how stupid can you be? I really, that's the only thing that I can say about that one. Then let's move to Wednesday games, where, yeah, I'm wearing Manchester City. Uh, they had a pretty darn good performance at Real Madrid. I mean, to be honest, the game started extremely slow. Uh, everyone needed to find the bearings and City played with a very weird lineup where basically there was no striker. Uh, I think Gabriel Jesus is the nominal striker but he was more out on the left somewhere so it was really uh, a weird that yeah, Guardiola again tinkering and trying to be overly smart. Um, but you know as the game progressed it didn't pick up much steam but you could see that Manchester City is the better team. There was only one real chance by Real Madrid, which was, I think, a shot by Benzema that should have, that could have made it. But um, ov ov overall, uh, the majority of chances fell to City. But same was in the second half. That City, honestly, was much in, was really in control, and there was not much coming from Real Madrid. Madrid who suddenly, I think, two weeks ago, I said they look solid, they look solid, and they lose to Real Sociedad in the cup, and since then. Uh, mm, what happened? I I think Barcelona is is giddy ahead of the Clasico because two weeks ago they thought, oh, this will be hard. Uh, it's Real Madrid's league to lose. I I think most would agree with me. And suddenly, and that this game will be a tight one. No, was no, it was never a tight one. Against the run of play, Vinicius Jr. puts a, puts a ball in, and it was and it was City slapstick defending in a way, and Isco. Makes it 1-0 uh, in, in, in the 60th. And at that point, I thought that City is rattled. And I also felt that Real Madrid finally has some control over the game and probably will get a dirty 1-0 home win, something like that. Uh, I really had the feeling that, yeah, that's, that's the, the game completely turned on that goal. No. Uh, from a nice uh, cross by De Bruyne, Gabriel Jesus can head, head, head it in with a potential push on Ramos, but I think there was only contact. There was not a push. If I look at the replay, I I, I remember, you know, I, I was during yesterday's games, I was mostly uh, talking to, to my wife because we see, hadn't seen each other the entire day. But I remember talking to her and saying, this is not enough of a push uh, to be overturned. And uh, it stood in the 78th. Then, and then Madrid fell apart. Uh, a tackle by Cavacal, where, yes, he wants to get the ball, but never gets to it. 
uh, it's a clear penalty and De Bruyne and I was actually yeah is uh, City now gonna convert finally a penalty who is gonna step up and yeah, it was De Bruyne who puts it in and I thought this is interesting uh, De Bruyne against Courtois so was one uh, uh, was two one for City then um, and I thought it could have been three one. Gabriel Jesus was brought down by Sergio Ramos, who took a red card for the for, for the team, and doesn't look good for Real Madrid going around. I have to say, though, remember when Manchester United in the League Cup was completely dominated by City for 40-45 minutes, and then if you look at the overall scoreline, how tight it actually was, they lost twice. So let's wait for it, but it looks like a great result for City. And what can I say about Lyon against Juventus? Um, didn't see too much. You were maybe had for two minutes, uh, showed something, and then Lyon took over. A horrible performance by Juve. Very slow, very passive. Um, already in the 20th, it uh, can be hits the bar after a corner, a corner kick. Ten minutes later, Awa goes on the side. Um, a nice in the individual ever puts the ball in the box where Tusa uh, one times it into the net. Uh, it took me a few times to really re realize how that goal happened. But overall, Juventus was downright awful. And Lyon probably should, should, should have gotten second one. The second half, yes, Juventus had control, but if you have no speed, what can you do? I, it's an enigma to me what Juventus is is doing. They were there was one where Dybala uh, I think had once a chance, then he tries to find Iguain, and that was basically it. And the rest was yeah, um, please ref give us a penalty. That's gonna be hard work. Um, I still think that Juventus will go on, but that's gonna be hard work for Juventus. Uh, that was a tough loss, and Sarri and Juventus they don't seem to be a match. Well, that's it. Let me know what you thought about uh, the games uh, in the Champions League. Um, fill me in if there's anything else that I forgot. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.